Welcome to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. I'm your host and speaking coach, Deborah Darris, known as the top Latina peak performance speaker. This podcast is here to support you with strategies and best practices of paid speakers so you can find out what works and what doesn't so you can achieve success with ease and grace in your speaking career. Enjoy the show. is all alone collecting dust? Wouldn't it be nice to make some passive income while you're out speaking on the road? Well, I do. Want to know my secret? Airbnb. I use Airbnb to make some extra cash to reinvest in marketing for my speaking business. It's so simple. You just set up a listing and voila, you come home to money in your bank account on top of what you already made speaking. If you want to know more, go to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast.com to get all the information. Welcome back to the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. I am your hostess with the mostess, Deborah Darris, and I'm super excited for another magnificent show. And before I forget to tell you, I want to let you know that we are now enrolling for the fifth cohort of the Synergy Speaker Mastermind. If you're interested to know more about it, you can sign up at my website, which is debradaris.com, and get a complimentary 30-minute coaching session. You just click on coaching and you can get scheduled right on my calendar. I also want to let you know, due to popular demand, that I have a brand new webinar. That's right. A new webinar, and it's five mistakes new speakers make and how you, my friends, can avoid them. And you can get information on how to access that free webinar. Just make sure you're signed up for my newsletter list. You can go right to my website, debradaris.com, sign up, and you will be notified to access that webinar, download the information, and be able to transform your life. So today is a very special day because we've had a guest that I've been wanting on the show for over a year now. Uh, We first met when we were speaking together at the National Latina Business Women's Association Conference. And I remember hearing her like, wow, this woman is fantastic. She's awesome. And I remember I was reading her bio to introduce her because I was emceeing the event and she was on a panel. I'm like, and I need a dentist. (laughs) So she's the perfect person to connect with. And ever since we've met, we've just been like synergy sisters. And I can't wait to introduce her to you. Her name is Dr. Diana Sachel. Ooh la la. She's been a dentist for over 20 years with a specialty in working with people with developmental disabilities. She's an active staff member at the City of Hope treating cancer patients and runs a very successful dental practice in Brentwood, California. She serves in the U.S. Army Reserve as a colonel and commander for the 185th Dental Company comprised of 150 soldiers. The dental unit treats people all over the world and soldiers alike. She has been in the military for 19 years, receiving numerous rewards in public service, including the KCET Local Hero Award. She's also the partner of Yambu Productions, where she and her partner produce the only Cuban and Peruvian festivals in L.A., they're super fun. As if that wasn't enough, she's the proud mommy of an adorable, brilliant young man, seven-year-old Lorenzo, who if you ever met, you'd be in love with. And guess what? Dr. Diana is the guest host of the show today. She's a recent graduate of the Synergy Speaker Mastermind. And as you've seen with many of the Mastermind members, she's doing a show takeover. So please give a a paid speaker now. Welcome to Dr. Diana. <laughs> so glad to be here and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> we are I'm really excited to be here and I'm super excited to be hosting, guest hosting for Deborah. As you know, uh we have been like soul sisters since we met. And I feel like I'm her big sister. And so for me to interview her is is such an honor. So I'm really glad to be here, Deborah. <laughs> and she truly is my big sister. Like before we got in here, I left my cell phone on top of the car. <laughs> and she's like, maybe you don't want your cell phone right there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So I'm here to protect her. So make sure she's got everything going. So do you want to get started? Yeah, let's do it. Well, I am very excited because I love public speaking and somebody like yourself, you know, what inspired you? What inspired you to be a public speaker? 
it's funny because when people, when I would get off the stage from speaking, many times people would ask me, you know, what was your motivation? And really, when I was younger, as a little girl, I never said, when I grow up, I want to be like Tony Robbins or Les Brown. I never even knew those people. What I knew were the teachers that inspired me. And I love school because I love learning. And I always wanted to be like the teacher's pet. It's the people pleaser in me. No, for sure. I'm the same way. So So I get it. School is awesome. I would sit up front and take notes and I'd be like, I want to share and I want to speak. And I remember in third grade, we had to do like the Declaration of Independence or something like that. Something that we had to memorize and speak. And I remember having a moment of anxiety and I thought I had two choices. I could play small and let my fear take over. Or I could give the most passionate, like Martin Luther King speech and like make every student cry. And I chose the latter, you know, and I just poured that speech out with all my heart. And they all cried. They they, (laughs) No, and actually what happened in school is people started hating you because you shine, right? Correct. Because I, you know, whatever reason. So they started not liking me, but I didn't care. And that bug, that little seed of being a speaker was, was planted but it didn't bloom or blossom until after my brother passed away. He had a developmental disability. That's why I connected with your story and also a seizure disorder. And so when he passed away of an epileptic seizure, I realized that I could not wait to go for my dreams. To live life. Yeah. I could not say, oh, well, when this is in order, or when I'm a perfect speaker, or when I have this organized, right? Because I was never, as my mentor, Dr. Bike. Michael Beckwith says, I was never going to have my ducks in a row. Correct. So I just realized that that was my time to go. And I've had a lot of mentors along the way that put me on stages and just said, speak. And so I've just been doing it imperfectly. And I just keep going because it's not about me, but about serving my audience. And And I think that's a great point that you say, why wait? You'll never have the perfect time. So get out there, be a speaker now. Exactly. And then the first, um, the name of my first business was Passionate Living Now. It's like not passionate living when you're ready or passionate living when you feel right. <laughs> you know, it's just, if, if it's the calling is within you, go for it. Absolutely. And I think that people who listen to this podcast and are thinking about being a paid speaker, they really have to, you know, there's no time like the present. Get onto your podcast, listen to your show, get signed up to your classes. I mean, don't wait because exactly. there'll never be a perfect time. Exactly. So tell me when you go out. So if I want to be this paid speaker and I want to go get out there, you know, what should audiences expect? What should they expect out of you when you speak? So when I first started, I was really, I was fairly young and they used to introduce me like I was in my mid 20s as a young speaker. And I remember being insulted. Now I'm like, I'm not insulted (laughs) when people people call me young. But you know what I always did, and it's like still the people pleaser um, in me, is I would always over deliver. And I would give so much content. But what I learned, and this is one of the mistakes new speakers make that I have in my new webinar, is less is more. Because it's kind of like when you go to a buffet, Diana, you can only eat so much, right? Like people can only retain so much information and then they're full. That's 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 actually a fact. That's scientific fact. We know that no matter what class you take, you only retain when you're listening to a speaker about 10%. But what you really retain is the emotion. Exactly. They don't remember what you say, but how you make them feel. Correct. So when I first started speaking, I was always over delivering content, giving too much content. And then what I've learned now is to hold back and I'm still learning it. I just did a speech yesterday. I was like, oh my God, what I tried to give them in an hour, I could could probably have given them 15% less and they would be wanting more. You want to give people appetizers. So they're still a little bit hungry and they want more and they see you as the expert. They don't see you as the sage on the stage as you know what you're doing and they don't. They see you as the answer to the pain or problem that they have and they want to work with you. They want to hire you to be a coach or a consultant or go on your program. I really encourage speakers, especially right now, we're kind of going through an interesting health crisis in the world uh, where uh, a lot of conferences are being canceled. Correct. And so every speaker should have some sort of an online program. They should have a webinar in their pocket 
So if a conference cancels, they can offer an alternative. An alternative, and they can still get that information and not worried about getting a virus of some sort. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's safe in their own home. I, I think that's wonderful. So one of the things that I noticed when I saw you speaking is that you evoke an emotion out of people. What are the types of things that you try to, what kind of emotions that do you try to evoke of people? I mean, I noticed I was like, whoa, I got to meet this woman. This woman is spectacular. Um, so what is it that they should expect? I love that you say that about evoking emotion. Because Tony Robbins, you know, he teaches NLP, Neuro Linguistic mm -hmm. Programming. And he taught, he says that we should anchor an emotion that we want our audience to feel. So if we want them to be excited, we should be excited. If we want them to be sad or melancholy, we should be sad and melancholy. And honestly, I have up until this point not really have done it intentionally. I'm just naturally, especially when I'm on stage as a teacher, feeling giddy and excited. No, you're funny. I mean, let's be real. I mean, honestly, I love funny people. I sit there and I'm I'm on YouTube listening to a lot of comedians. When I listened to Deborah speak for the first time, I was like, this is a woman I want to meet and hang out with. She's fun. She's funny. She makes me excited to be there. I wasn't bored at this speech. So I think Definitely, you're you're a very funny person and you bring that out. And it, it's like you glow when you're on stage. And that's something, I'm so glad that you said that because when I first started and I felt like, oh, I'm so young or I'm so inexperienced, all my limiting beliefs were coming up, I was much more stiff. And I was like this professor because I was a professor for 17 years. So I was very academic and I, was, I really wasn't being my authentic self. Mm -hmm. I was being the speaker that I thought they wanted me to be that was highly intellectual. So guess what? I wasn't relatable because I wasn't being myself. And so it was about five years ago when I was like super freelance, like I had no real contracts, no W-2s, but I was totally 1099 on my own. I'm like, no one can tell me to be politically correct. No one can tell me what to do. I could just be myself. And it was like this liberating moment where I was like, if I want to tell, I don't mean to be funny, honestly. I like, because it's not like what joke will make people laugh. It's just like when I'm honest. And well, I think that's I think that's a great point because when you're watching a speaker and you hear them tell you stories, some of them are painful, some of them are not. Right. And but you're like we can relate to you because we've all you know many of us have had deaths in our family, and right. you've been so authentic in like what has happened in your life, and it makes you more relatable. And I think that that's a really important fact for people who want to be speakers yes. that they should be authentic don't tell a story if it didn't really happen to you like I mean, do things that are relatable to you and then other people relate to that okay maybe not everybody like you know my mom passed away of cancer okay i tell that story yeah maybe not everybody's mom died of cancer but the ones who did they're like oh now i get it i right. get it like i can relate to you. not everybody's brother passed away but they may have had a death in their family and you're re now relatable to them. So I think it's really a great um, skill set that you have. And one thing that I learned kind of the hard way is that if you tell a story like that, because some people have processed through their grief and some people haven't, it could really be a trigger for some people. And when you take them down, you also have to take them back up. You know what I mean? And I, I've taken so many speaking courses and one of the courses says, you know, when you take them down into the darkness that you've been, make sure you take them. What did you learn? What are the lessons that they can learn and what they can do now? Because otherwise I've had people cry and like walk out of the room because they hadn't processed it. And it hit something that was a chord with them because they were me and I was them. And so it's really important. And when I do things about trauma, I spoke to a group of survivors of rape and um and, and like abuse, they had me give a trigger warning. Say, so I'm going to tell the story and I want to let you know, for some of you, it may be a trigger. So I'm just giving you that awareness. Yeah. And I think that's really important factor because we don't know what triggers right. people to do what. And I, I think though, when you tell these stories, you, and they see how you've gotten through it and you've persevered and it inspires them. Right. And, and I think that's one of the things that I felt the most greatest kinship with you is that you persevere. 
Mm-hmm. You, no matter what went, you, you know, you were so honest about ADHD. You were so, uh, you were so honest about the death of your brother. You were so honest about so many things and you persevered. And I think that is so important. It's such an important story to tell, especially at this time in our society that we persevere and we inspire those. And I think you're a great inspiration for a lot of people. Thank you. And I asked to be the messenger for the message. You got to be careful when you do that, because sometimes I'll say things that I was not comfortable saying. Like one one speech, I mentioned something about my divorce. And however, somebody in the audience came up to me after in tears crying that she was just going through the same thing and she needed to hear that. So part of speaking is preparation, having your outline. So that's like the science part. But the art of it is actually surrendering to your intuition and allowing your intuitive guidance system and trusting that you're going to say what people need to hear. And I think that brings us into our next point is like, how do you know that you're meant to be a speaker? Like, what what is it? You know, we can, you know, maybe there are people who are like, oh, but is it in me to be a speaker? Like, what? What inspired you to be, or like what made you think that you could be a speaker or you were meant to be a speaker? I truly believe that anybody with the calling is a messenger for a very important message. And after interviewing about 45 experts just on this podcast, almost every single person that I asked, so how'd you go from a a plastic surgeon to being a speaker? How'd you go from a lawyer to being a speaker? They all said it was this little voice. It was their gut. It was something, it was nothing logical, didn't make any sense on paper or in their career, but there was this little inkling and they had to listen to it right. and to follow that guidance because it was, they had to say that somebody needed to hear their message. And I think listening to that intuition is really important. I think we have forgotten. I think as children, we have that intuition, we get, get it. And somehow in adulthood, we kind of lose track. And so you're telling them, let's bring back that intuition and coming back to feeling what's the right thing to do. I love it. Yeah, yeah. my new book, Align for Success, is all about tapping into your intuitive guidance system. Yeah, and I think that's important for the listeners of the podcast to really listen to that intuition, that it's really powerful. And what, is there any signs that you hear in your, like, is there anything that are like, oh, I really felt like this is when I knew or not really? Did it kind of like- Oh, yes. Thanks for asking me. It just, <laughs> I just, I remembered the exact moment. So my mentor who dragged me to Toastmasters, I did not want to go to Toastmasters. I did not want to become a professional speaker. I was happy being a coach and I was coaching and I had a lot of clients. They had a lot of success. And, but he's like, no, you need to go to Toastmasters. So I listened to him and they asked me to do a 30 second elevator pitch. I was like, no, I don't want to speak. I turned it down. Like nobody did that. Every, I didn't know you were supposed to just say yes. And I said, no, I'm good. I don't really want to speak. <laughs> and I said, no. And he's like, you just have to keep going back and you can't say no. You have to say yes. And then he had me do this meditation. He facilitated a group. It's like a mastermind group. And he had us visualize. And I visualized on this whiteboard, Monday, Arizona, Tuesday, New Mexico, Thursday, Chicago. And I'm like, why do I have all of these states when I work for the state of California? I'm not going out of town. If I do, it will be Sacramento. And it was, that was my speaking tour. That was like my speaking schedule. So like it started coming in little bits of me seeing myself and seeing people. But the key is for people out there that are like a little doubt or maybe it's not the right time is if you have the idea, if you have the thought, the seed planted in you, the universe, God, your divine guidance will give you all the resources, support, people for you to fulfill that, that you don't have to know. That's why I say feel from your intuition because if you think it's totally a different part of your brain, right? Dr. Joe Dispenza in neuroscience classes teaching me. So if you're in your thinking part of your brain, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be be caught in a loop. Like a a never ending loop. Exactly. Because you're listening to, I don't have enough of this or I'm not enough of that. Or I don't know who to go to. I don't know who to, who was going to ask me to speak or all this stuff. And you're just like, let the, let the, Let your divine intuition find the answers for you. And I have a practical tip on that. You know, in the mastermind, I I recommended the book Life Visioning by Dr. Michael Beckwith. And I literally do that visioning process at least once a month to guide me what to do and where to go and how to be as a speaker. Without that, I wouldn't know. So I think that's a great point. And I think for those of you on the podcast that are listening, that are thinking about doing it, these are great tips that Deborah is giving us. So a lot of people 
they're public speaking, but maybe they're not getting paid and they're doing a lot of freebies. Let's let's get to the nitty gritty, the down, honest truth, because, you know, I think people want to know, well, when am I going to get paid? So tell me, how long did it take before you got your first paid gig? That's a really great question. And nobody's ever asked me that. Genius. She's so good. Um, So when I first had the inkling, you know, I had that visioning that was around like 1999 or something. And my my mentor at my job when I was working was giving me opportunities to speak. I was doing this 40 hour train the trainer program Mm -hmm. to people that were like way more seasoned. But I just had that in me to be a facilitator. And I was doing that. And then I put on this big diversity career expo in Inglewood. And it would be like thousands of people and they would have me on the microphone and I would get such a high to be on the microphone. I'm like, ooh la la, this is fun. And I lo- that was like the best part of the event. The event like killed me nearly, but getting on the microphone was amazing. And from that time, 1999, to the time that I was at Toastmasters and they said, how much do you charge to speak? It was four years. So, and probably the seed was planted long before that. But I didn't get my first paid gig until four years. And that was not trying physically. Like, I didn't do any of the marketing strategies I teach you guys in the mastermind group. I just had an intention. It was just a consciousness. It's like, oh, this would be awesome to be able to speak, you know, professionally. And then somebody asked me, and how much do you charge? I was like, oh, (laughs) I don't know. Let me get back to you. Well, and I I think this is if there's no other impetus to get into Deborah Darris's class, it's that she 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 waited. It almost took her four years to get a first paid speaking gig. Most of her most of her class uh, students, they're getting paid gigs almost immediately. There's really no reason if you're not in her mastermind class, you are missing out because it's spectacular. You learn so much. It can be overwhelming at times because she gives so much information that nobody else gives you. So, I mean, it, I, I'm plugging her because I've done her class and I love it. I, I think that you, if you're really thinking about becoming a paid speaker, her class is a must. Absolute must. Thank you. And I have this one student that graduated like four years ago. Actually, I have three that have come back to me. One of them is now getting university gigs and we're like negotiating better prices. And her daughter got a paid gig. Her 16-year-old no daughter. No way. That's so amazing. So like, watch out, Lorenzo's going to be next. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he, he will great. be a great speaker. He, he loves will. to talk. <laughs> yeah, it rubs off. And then I had another girl, because before I did the mastermind, I was doing the Be a Paid Speaker as a seminar. So a couple of the people, it's so funny because it's probably about four years, are coming now and they're like, okay, now I've got my speaking gig. So I don't promise people that they come to the mastermind and that overnight you're going to get it. I mean, that happens in rare, rare cases. It depends how clear you are. When you're clear on your topic, like someone like Dr. Sanana, who knows, I'm the menopause queen, well, right? And, she's, uh, and you have to understand, she was also a professor. I mean, yes. I mean, she was a professor in a university. She, she knew how to give a speech because she was doing it right. as a professor over and over, day after day after day. So, exactly. And, you know, of course, you nobody can guarantee anything. You, you, But it's sort of like going back to university. That's kind of how I felt when I was in your class. Uh. Like, I felt like I was back in school. It was like, oh, I'm in class. I'm writing tremendously. And, and, and I'm learning all this new information that I'd never seen before. And, but if you, if four years seems to be like kind of the average, or let's say between two and four years, the, that is the time to learn your craft, right? Like college, Very right? Good. I yeah. think it's like if you can imagine it being like college, right? Well, I mean, I worked through college. I did other things before I got my degree, and I started making money as a dentist and things like that. I mean, it could be if they think about it in those terms that this is your path, like college, right? And your internship is doing all those pro bono those gigs, pro, yes. So you can feel when you get paid, like when I've gotten paid some of those big fees. It like made me so nervous in my stomach. I'm like, oh my God, they're paying me all this money. I better do like the pressure I put on myself. But by doing all these pro bono gigs and then getting clients from that, you know, you may get clients for dentist clients or you may get consult consultation clients. You know what I mean? That enables you to feel super confident when you get on stages and there's a thousand people or five thousand people. 
And I think people forget that as well. They forget that some of those pro bono gigs are not really pro bono. No. I mean, I can't tell you, there's many times that I've gone to speak um, for a dental association and things like that. And I did it for free. And all of a sudden I got 10 people. They're like, I want to send my family to you. I want to send this person oh. to you. So the payback is really the clientele that you get when they see you up. So don't um, shun away in the beginning, those pro bonos don't say, oh, I just will not do it for less than, you know, $10,000. Well, yeah, but, you know, as you've said to us in the classes, there's other things you can do instead of that will be worth it for you. Exactly. See, I listen to class. You are very, <laughs> very good. And I really encourage those of you who say, hey, I've listened to this podcast and maybe I don't want to quit my job. I don't want to be a full time speaker. You could still use speaking to promote your business. Which Speak, I do. Yeah, which speaking doesn't have to be a full-time gig. It can be a tool to promote your business. Well, you've been an awesome guest host, my friend. And you've been an awesome interviewee. <laughs> good questions. She's got good questions. And she's my dentist. <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. So, and by the way, she's going to be coming back on the show to talk about her speaking career and all that she's doing and amazing conferences. Do you want to give a plug for any of the conferences that you have coming up? For them They're to mostly dental conferences, so I've got some upcoming dental conferences coming up, but um, you can find that out on my website, which is www.ladentaldayspa.org. What about salsa? My, my people love to salsa dance. <laughs> so for those of you who enjoy salsa dancing, um, my partner and I have Yambu Production, and we're having the Cuban American Music Festival June 14th at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, Lala. which is in downtown LA. Uh, very low cost. Look at... Uh, www.cubanamericanmusicfestival.com to buy your tickets online. It's 25, I believe it's $30 uh, pre-sale and $40 at the door. Four bands, uh, one coming from Cuba. Um, you have cigars and Cuban drinks. I mean, it's like going to Cuba without spending the, without getting on a plane. There you go. I love it. <laughs> I had the best time last year. <laughs> Thank you so much well, thank you for having me. And thank you all for listening. And like I always say, it's not about being a passive spectator, but being an active participant. So even if you take one tool that we said in this podcast, you will be that messenger for the message. Ciao. Thank you for tuning into the Be A Paid Speaker Now podcast. If you want to be a paid speaker right now, you can download the five steps to get started as a paid speaker right on my website. Just go to debradaris.com slash speak now. And remember, with the power of synergy, anything is possible.